So this is me designing a slingshot. I had taken the piece of paper and drawn a couple of iterations of, of attempts at trying to get it to come out. It was tough to get it to come out symmetrically and then I finally remembered draw half of it, fold it in half, and then draw the other half from the first piece you made. So then, then once I did that, it worked out pretty good. So here I am drilling out the rivets on a skillet. It was an old skillet that uh, somebody in the family threw out. It was a Teflon skillet that somebody had cut on a bunch. So it was in pretty tough shape. So I thought I, the bottom of it was pretty flat. So I thought I could use it to, to cut out and get a nice chunky piece of aluminum for the, the center of the slingshot. So I used um, my portable bandsaw that I have rigged up as a little with a little mini table on it. And of course, I'm wearing all the right safety gear because it's spitting aluminum pieces at me everywhere. And I thought this would actually be pretty easy to do, but it turns out sawing through a, a probably, it wasn't probably quarter of an inch thick, but it was pretty close. And especially given that it was rounded on the edge, really made it tough to saw through. You can see here, I'm, I'm kind of struggling to try to get through it. And then when I finally do, there's a couple of times where the video will stop, the, basically the blade's getting bound up and I'm having to back up and sort of reset. Um, I was hoping to be able to just kind of stick it in and go around, but I ended up using the sort of the standard bandsaw trick of just hacking at it in pieces, and knocking chunks of it out. But once I get going here, I get going pretty good. But you can see here it's stuck to turn the, the bandsaw off and, and fiddle with it some to get it loose. But it wasn't, it wasn't too bad, I, you know, still have all my fingers, so that's the most important part. And then I was running out of throat here. It's a, it's a, a DeWalt portable bandsaw, the plug-in kind, and I made a little table out of it from a couple of YouTube videos that I watched. It's, it's actually, I don't use it hardly at all as a portable bandsaw to take it around, but it comes in super handy for stuff like this, using, making, making a little metal bandsaw out of it, which which it's handy, although it's a little on the small side for a bandsaw, but it, it works out pretty well. So here I am about, about to get, finally get a, a fairly flat piece that I can then use to cut out. And so then I'm now actually, at this point, cutting the bits out for the, the slingshot. I do recycle all the, all the metal bits. All the metal bits go in a bucket and at some point I run the metal bucket down to the recycler. I typically don't stand in line to, to, to be able to get get the money. I just give it to somebody who's already got a car. A load of stuff is going in. It works out pretty good. But I, I hate to throw that stuff away because it's it's very definitely very recyclable. So you can see here, just nibbling at it. There's just really no good way. The bandsaw blade's too thick and not very flexible, so you can't you can't really cut around a corner with it. But you can nibble at it a little bit and then go at it in chunks. And then, of course, you know, we're all the Jimmy DeResta fans and watching his magic on the bandsaw is, is, always, is always good. And it pick up tips every time I watch him cut something. So, but. And then uh, belt sander, which does a good job of really grinding the bits down, smoothing it out. It's got a, a flat, a platen right behind it that I can use to for flat stuff and then it's got a, a flexible part up in the middle where I can use to get kind of in the middle in the where the round part is. So it worked out good. You can't see all a little bit off camera here, but I'm using sort of just above the, the platen to get at where the, the belt is flexible. And then here, uh, belt sander, I'm just essentially doing the, fl the flats. So grinding all that Teflon off, definitely wearing a respirator for this. And I also have a shop vac hooked up to the to the belt sander here to suck up all that stuff because who knows what's in that, who knows what chemicals are in that. But definitely didn't want to breathe any of that in. I also have a air filtration system in the shop that I run typically all the time when I'm doing this kind of stuff. So making pretty good progress here. It was a surprisingly chunky piece of a pan for probably a cheap pan that 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 somebody bought and then you know cut into the Teflon with a knife. So. Um, I made, made a bunch of knives when I was younger and some, kind of using sort of the standard knife knife making technique here where I'm going to epoxy a couple pieces of wood on both sides of this and then to get the wood to stick properly, I'm going to drill a couple holes in it and then pin it. 
So this is me drilling a hole through the aluminum. It's pretty exciting. I'm gonna run at this a little bit on fast speed. You don't have to watch me drill a whole bunch of holes. You know the routine. You know the drill. A little bit of epoxy. I find the you can do volume or weight. I find weights just easier to do. I bought a little digital scale. It's just a little cheapo and. Of course, the first time I used it, I spilled epoxy all over it, but it um, works pretty good. And all I'm trying to do is just get e equal amounts of the epoxy out. So I had a couple pieces of cherry left over from another project, and then a little tiny piece of, uh, I think, of walnut to go down the center to give it a, a, little bit of a, a little bit of interest in the center. And, of course, the whole clamp situation, trying to get... With clamping epoxy is always a little challenging. You want to get it on snugly, but you don't want to... Sque really squeeze it because I don't want to squeeze all the epoxy out. Um, I also don't want to shift around too much. And after you get it, after you get it set, the epoxy will stick pretty good. It doesn't slide around too bad. So I replaced all the clamps, let it sit for a while, and take all the clamps off, and then grind it on one side, so flatten it out, but basically get all the epoxy goo off of it. And then Essentially, at this point, you're taking the drill, and I'm just really drilling through the same holes that I drilled before. They're full of epoxy now, so I'm drilling out the epoxy and then also drilling into the wood because I'm going to laminate pieces on the top here, and I want to be able to find the holes from the bottom. And then I'm going to cut this out but fairly roughly. The final cutting will go after I glue on the other side. So we're making pretty good progress. Another round of epoxy to glue on the other side. Give it a good stir. I always wear gloves when I work with epoxy because I get it everywhere. I've ruined just about every pair of pants I have with getting glue or paint on them. So try to. I'm I'm one of those kind of people that I get a little glue on my hand and then and then it's you know on your face and it's in your pocket and it's on your other arm and it's on you know it's just everywhere. It just gets everywhere. So I try to just manage it as best I can. But during all of the the COVID pandemic and and managing my hands more effectively has has really given me a lot more practice at, at being careful with hands. So here's the slingshot after I've ground all the wood off and sanded it down. And I also laminated it along, along a little palm piece there, which I didn't video, so I did that off camera. So it actually kind of testing out the hand fit, kind of playing around with the different configurations. It seems like it's going to work pretty well. It's not perfectly symmetric, which it's always a... It was a bit of a crapshoot with uh, epoxy. So I've glued in some pins, epoxied in some pins, and let them set, let them set overnight. And that that needs to be ground off. As so I grind that off on the grind those off on the sander, kind of the same routine. And then once we're all done, basically just coat it with a, a, a coating of some oil. And this is this is always the fun part to get it to make it look nice. Doing a little finishing on the slingshot. Did some final sanding off camera. There's just lots of sanding when you make something like this. Um, and I'm not I'm all that fond of it. I did it over a couple of days here and there. Kind of in between other projects while other stuff was gluing and setting. So we're running this a little bit and fast forward. So you can see me basically getting a good heavy coat of oil on it. I let it set for a little while and then wiped it down good. Um, and then... Uh, I'll show you what it looks like when we're all done here. The slingshot's all done. I ordered uh, the rubber tubes and the little pocket off of, I think off of Amazon. It wasn't that expensive. And I ordered a bunch of clay balls. So they just kind of disintegrate an impact and, you know, not leaving a mess in the environment. All in all, they came out pretty cool. It was fun. Got to ruin a, a an already ruined pan. That was kind of fun. I've never never done that that kind of cutting before. That kind of metal cutting. So that was kind of fun. Aluminum. So it's pretty easy. But all in all, it was a it was a pretty satisfying project.